Now the first inequality we're going to consider is the more than or greater than symbol. And it looks like this, an arrow pointing to the right. And what we would write is something like this. For instance, I could say that 7 is more than, say, 2. I could say 17 is more than 2, and so on. Another symbol that we can use is the less than symbol, or smaller than symbol. It's an arrow pointing to the left. So I could say 5 is less than 7, or minus 5 is less than 7, less than 7.2, and so on. Now it's quite useful to be able to read inequalities not just from left to right, but also to be able to read them from right to left. So in this one we're saying that 17 is more than 2, but it's still sensible to say 2 is less than 17, or 2 is smaller than 17. And in this one we've got minus 5 is less than 7.2, but read in the other direction, 7.2 is more than minus 5. Now, inequalities can be represented by number lines, so I'd like to show you that now. So, for instance, suppose we had, say, x was greater than 5. What we can do is illustrate this then on a simple number line, just by putting a dash on this line, marking in 5, and what we're interested in is values that are greater than 5. And because it's greater than 5, we just put a circle round the mark that says 5, and we want values in this direction that are more than 5. And there'll be an infinite number of them, so there'll be no end to the value. So we just put an arrow saying that we want all these values and more in this direction. Values like 6, 7.8, 10.3, and so on. Sometimes you're asked to find the smallest integer, that's a whole number that x could be, that satisfies this inequality. The smallest whole number that is more than 5 would be 6, so the answer would be x would be equal to 6, if that were the question. Now sometimes you get statements like this written the other way around. I'll show you what I mean. Suppose, for instance, I had 7 is more than x. Now, if I wanted to illustrate this on a number line, I could mark in the 7, let's say over here, and I want values that are less than 7. It's easier to read this, as I say, from right to left. x is smaller than 7. So I want all the values in this direction. So x could be 6, minus 5, minus 10.9, and so on. We might be asked to find the largest integer that satisfies this inequality. That would be x is 6. Let's look at doing the same thing over here, using the less than inequality. Suppose I had x were to be less than minus 2, say. I would draw a line like this, mark on minus 2, and a circle round the minus 2, and I would want the values that are less than minus 2. And suppose I had this written round in another way, with x on the right-hand side. Suppose I had, for instance, 7 were less than x. What would I want here? Well, I could mark in my 7. I could read this as x is more than 7. So I could mark in a 7 here, and I want to take values of x which were more than 7. So hopefully you can see how we can read inequalities the other way, not just from left to right, but from right to left. Okay, so we've I've done these uh, inequalities here, the 
more than and less than, but there are other ones. Let's show you another one. There's this one, more than or equal to. More than or equal to looks like this symbol. Okay, it's just like the arrow pointing to the right, but it's got another extra line underneath it. And suppose I was to say this, that x was more than or equal to minus 3, say. What would this look like on a number line? Well, if we were doing this, we put the number line there, put minus 3. Now, we've got to be careful with this one. Before, we were putting a circle around the minus 3. But because we're allowed to actually equal the value minus 3, we fill this circle in. And now we want values that are greater than or equal to minus 3, so we want values in that direction. So x could be minus 3 now. It could be minus 2, it could be minus 1.3, naught, 7, 9.8 and so on. Now let's introduce you to another symbol. And this one is the less than or equal to one. And less than or equal to looks like this. It's the less than sign with an equals underneath it, another line like that. And so if I had x was less than or equal to 9, then on a number line, what would that look like? Would mark in the 9, again draw a circle around the 9, but because we're allowed to equal the 9, we just shade that in. And we want values that are less than or equal to 9, so we want values in that direction. 9, 8, 6.3, minus 7, etc. would be all values that would satisfy this inequality. Now I want to introduce you to another type of inequality, it's what I call the in-between type. So let me just explain what I mean by that. Suppose we have x and I write two inequalities, something like this, either side of my x. And Let's say I have minus 4 and 7. What does this mean? Well it means that x is more than or equal to minus 4 but less than or equal to 7. And I can illustrate this again on the number line by marking in minus 4 and 7. And then, because x can be more than or equal to minus 4, I draw a circle around that and shade it in. And x is less than or equal to 7, so I draw a circle around there and fill that one in. And I want values of x anywhere between minus 4 and 7, inclusive, OK? Let's try another one. Let's suppose we had this, x, and then we had that symbol, and we had this symbol here. I'll put minus 2 here, and 4 here. What does this mean? Well, x is any value that is more than minus 2, but at the same time, x must be less than or equal to 4. And on a number line, what would that look like? We'll draw our number line, mark in minus 2 and the 4. But this time, x has got to be more than minus 2, so we need an open circle round there, but less than or equal to 4. So the circle round 4 is shaded in. And I want all the values between minus 2, greater than minus 2, but less than or equal to 4. OK, so I hope that you've been able to follow that and have got a better understanding of how we use the inequality symbol and how we can read it and also how we can display inequalities on a number line.